a restriction on collecting interest between one Jew to another. Jew allowed to pay interest to a Goy and allowed to collect interest from a Goy if he gives him loan. But if a Jew gives a loan to another Jew, he's not allowed to charge him any interest. No gifts for the loan, not only cash, also gifts. So, okay, you know what, don't pay me interest, but allow me to use your gym for free. Allow me to get cars from your agency anytime I need. Allow me to stay in your apartment when I go to Florida. It's all interest. Everything that has a financial value, if you give a loan to a Jew, not allowed to collect from him anything, even indirectly. Some say, even if you see him on the street and before you didn't say hello to him, you're not allowed to even say hello to him. That's also interest. You make him feel good for the loan. That's how, go- that's how strict he goes. Then, the Torah call it Neshech. Neshech, it's biting. Neshicha. The dog bites. Neshech. Neshech. What's Neshech? When you eat, you bite little by little. You don't feel. Every bite is very little. You have a big cow to finish. Every bite you bite, nobody sees the difference. There's a big one-ton meat. You have to eat. So you come, you bite one piece. You bite. Every bite you do, you don't affect the scale. But in the end, only bones left. That's the way the interest is. It pays you little by little. It doesn't realize until it collapses. All the people who pay interest, you see high interest, they're in the end they're all collapsing. So it's a, it's a multiple sin. The lender, it's a sin from the Torah. The borrower, it's also a sin from the Torah. The witnesses who signed the agreement, also it's a sin from the Torah. The broker who introduced them to each other, also a sin from the Torah. And what happened to them? When the resurrection of the dead will occur, they will not rise. Can you believe such a punishment? Mortgages is goyim. It's owned by goyim, millions of owners. You can count that most of the owners are goyim. And there's also a teriska. They make partnership agreement. Not that they respect it, but at least they make it. If you, you took interest from a Jew and you didn't know, and you one day risked that you collected $2,000 every month for the last five years, and you just went to Shur, like today, and you found out that you're not allowed to charge. 24000 years, five years, $110,000. What do you have to do? You have to return it to him. Illegal money. Unless, if it was Mechalel Shabbat, if you found out that it's not Shomer Shabbat, you got lucky. Why? Mechalel Shabbat is 100% a goy. No difference between him and a goy. If it was Mechalel Shabbat and you charge him interest, it's like you took from Ahmed. So I allowed to take from Ahmed. But what happened if you, he is your lender, the Mechalel Shabbat, and you paid him interest? You allowed to pay a Goy interest? No. The Jew is a Goy only to go against him, not to give him gifts. He gets punished from both sides. With the privileges of the Torah, he loses, like a Goy. Whatever the goy doesn't have, he doesn't have. But the obligation of the Jews that the goyim don't have, he still have. So he get, he get from both sides. He doesn't get what the Jews supposed to get from Hashem, but he doesn't get dismissed from what the Jews are obligated. Bottom line, the biggest fool from all over is losing. And I have to charge interest.